Hi, we are back today. Oh my God, I feel totally and completely ripped open and very vulnerable for today's topic. Not necessarily because of the topic, but because I've been having just really next level container expansion experiences, both in my personal life and with my clients. And whew, it just feels really vulnerable and open. So let's talk about this. Okay. So today I wanted to share with you some beliefs that I had to change about myself, about men, and about relationships to really call in that soulmate love into my life. And not only just to call it in, but to allow it to grow and expand. We're still growing and expanding on levels that I never even could imagine even six months ago because my container couldn't even hold that in my imagination, if that makes sense. So this stuff is real and you need to be able to reprogram your nervous system to catch up to the new stuff. I'm in that process right now, massively. So um, yeah, it's real. Okay, so I have my notes here. I really wanted to give this some thought and to really go deep with you guys. So number one, the number one belief that I had to really learn to embody is that it's possible to have soulmate love. I had a lot of stories and programming and things from my past that said, it can't be that great. Like, right? Like you can't have it all. Like it's, if this is gonna be good, then this can't be good. Like all of that stuff, I had to really shed that and know that it's possible. It is possible to have divine union. It is possible to have soulmate level, heart ripped open, making love to the divine kind of love. It's possible. Number two belief was, this is a big one. I think I'm gonna get emotional saying this, that it's possible for me. Because once I got to it's possible, there was like, well, it's possible for those people over there, but it's not possible for someone like me. And so I had to really start believing that why not me? Why not? It is possible for me. It is possible for me. So that was number two. Number three belief, and this has really been a journey for me of learning this, and I fully stand behind this that it's not going to show up perfectly packaged for you. Like it's not going to always look like the fairy tale prince on a horse. It may, and it may lead to that, but that's not always how it's going to be. And that you need to be okay with the evolution of it. You need to be okay with the journey of it. And, and that was the next one. Number four was, I've realized that the journey is the marriage, not the outcome. So we think that marriage is this high outcome that once we get here, everything's perfect. Nothing's ever going to go wrong. Like it's all going to be butterflies and rainbows. And it certainly feels like that for myself now. But you guys have to remember that we went through a lot of those dark alleys. We went through a lot of those stages where we thought we weren't going to make it. We, we had all of the drama and the fights and all the stuff. And we stuck it out long enough to help each other heal through it. So what we realized, my husband and I, is that our journey is the marriage, the standing the ground, the waiting, like instead of running from the room, the grounding ourselves in the room and saying that we are in this together, no matter what it is, and that we are fighting this thing, not each other. We're fighting this issue or this belief or this situation, never each other. So the belief in that once we arrive at the marriage, it's all perfect, had to go and realize that every moment, every year, every anniversary, we were going to get stronger and stronger through all of those ups and downs, through all of those ups and downs. Now, obviously there are some primary things that I consider a healthy union, right? Like if there's physical abuse or like really like cheating and things like that, like those are harder to overcome. And of course, some people do overcome those things, but they're harder to work with. Women like you and I, we want a healthy divine union. And then realizing that the, the journey is the marriage, right? And 
the next one I had was that I can have all the control as long as I let go of the control. And this is a big one. I was just having a conversation about this with a client that just got engaged. And she and I are talking about how when we mentally try to control things, it has to be this way. It has to look this way. It has to end this way. It doesn't really work out great because we lose that gut level emotional reaction from the guy. And if you want to know what that is, I have another video on that that it's linked below. Because now we're all up in his head, uh, in our head, and we're taking him in his head. But when we surrender the mental control and we stay in our body and we guide our we become the oracle and his guide from there. We have all the control. Women have such control in marriages. Like we have so much power is the right word, not control, but power. We have so much influence on a man that has that gut low level emotional reaction towards us, right? So these were some of those core beliefs of knowing that I get to have this. And it gets to be yummy and delicious. And it also gets to evolve with me, with us, with our container. And realizing that the deeper our container, our nervous system to hold that level of joy, romance, money, sex, union, emotional intimacy will dictate how much we're able to produce out here. We think, well, let me get it here, right? But if you don't have the capacity to hold that, your nervous system starts short-circuiting and creating self-sabotage and doubts. So the right way to do this is the process that I teach in the Femme Fortune Container Course is you work inside first, and then you let it show up here and be able to hold it so you don't have to self-sabotage. You catch yourself in the self-sabotage and you don't let it go there. You don't let the whole thing spiral out of control. The seventh one that I'm going to add is with the right guy, you literally can't make a mistake, right? Like you can have those moments where you've lost consciousness or you've gone back into the program, but with the right guy, with the guy who's in it to win it, the long-term guy, the forever guy, the divine union, you will always work through things together. It will, don't let it get to a place where it's you versus him. It's always the both of you guys in your romance bubble, in your union, against the problem, against the, the thing that you are trying to resolve. So for those of you guys that are interested in going deeper into this work, I have two of my best-selling relationship courses currently on 25% off for the Labor Day weekend. Today is the last day to get that. And the code is linked in the description box below. It's Smart Love. And the two programs that this is valid on is Modern Dating for Queens. This is my rotational dating course and also on conscious couples intensive. This is for women that wanna have that next level emotional intimacy and um, really connect heart to heart, not mind to mind with a guy. So those, are, those two are currently on 25% off, linked below, today is the last day. Also this Friday, we are meeting for the full day, we have a full intensive in the conscious couture coaching course, which the name says coaching, but really it's a, conscious communication skills program. It's going to be amazing for coaches, healers, teachers, public speech speakers, content creators, but also for parents, women wanting to have conscious relationships. Anyone wants to up their game in how they communicate. And when you purchase that, the Femme Fortune comes with it. It's inside of that portal. So I hope you enjoyed this. And know that it is possible for you, that soulmate love is possible for you, but you need to believe it. Because if you don't believe it, even when it shows up, you doubt it, you second guess it, you sabotage it, you say, no, this is too good to be true, I can't have it. But if it's too good to be true, that's the thing that I want. I want things that are so amazingly good, right? I want the things that are beyond good, they're great, they're ecstasy. Those are the things that I want. So what the hell is this too good to be true concept? Like, where is that yuckiness coming from, right? So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments what beliefs that you've had to change or need to change to attract that next level soulmate love. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.